Hey guys, Jill here. Welcome back. I am in the house and it's quiet, which is so strange. <laughs> Nathan uh, has been hunting this weekend and he took the girls with him because I have a doula client who is due any day. So I'm just kind of on call, hanging out, waiting uh, to when I need to go to the hospital, be with her. But I'm gonna go outside and harvest some uh, cabbage for lunch to make myself for lunch. And I'm just gonna kinda check on the farm. Usually Nathan tends to the rabbits and things like that. So I'm just going to walk around, make sure everyone's well fed, watered, has hay, all the things. So I just thought I'd take you guys along with me. Also have some pretty exciting things um, to tell you guys about. So I'm excited about that as well. First thing I wanted to show you guys though, I've been fermenting all the things. It has just been so easy. Nathan also loved the fermented radishes that I did. So I was like, oh, well then I have to just keep doing them. So here we have some more fermented radishes that I did. Here's some fermented kohlrabi. Um, I got questions. Oh, does it have to be on a heat mat? No, this was the heat mat I had when I was start, trying to start my sourdough and I just never moved it back outside. But these look really good. They smell really good too. I can already smell that nice little fermented smell. Um, but I'm excited to try these. We've only got a couple more days and this will be my first time doing the kohlrabi. So we'll see how well they taste. Made sure I grabbed my knife this time and my coffee. Y'all know, priorities outside. So Nathan doesn't go out of town often. Usually it's just hunting season <laughs> is when he goes out of town. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I miss him so much. One, it's just really strange being in the house without Nathan and the kids. And Nathan and I, every night, he starts me a fire and we just hang out in the living room and we just talk, you know, and we dream together. And it's been so weird, like going to bed early and not having a fire and not talking to him. And I think it's always good like to take trips or go places without your spouse. Um, I'm a huge proponent. I mean, I would go everywhere with Nathan, but I think it's good in times like this when you do have your spouse go away or like when I went to California, it was like, oh my gosh, I missed you so much. Like I appreciate everything Nathan does. Like he wakes up every morning before work and he makes me a fire. That way I have a fire when I wake up in the morning and it's just like, oh. You're so sweet. Uh, so I just encourage you guys, take a minute to love on your spouses because when they're gone and they go hunting, you realize just how much you missed them. So I'm pretty sure the first stop's gonna be getting all the animals fed and watered. It's been getting below freezing every night, but getting pretty, like right now it's 40 outside and it's been getting to like, yesterday it was like 55, so I don't think that their water's like freezing at all but we have just been checking on it diligently, making sure they have hay, especially. Um, rabbits are actually really fine with the cold, but that's just something Nathan and I, we just feel better making sure they have good bedding. Hey, little man, you want some water? Hey, little lady, how's it going, Coco? How's it going? Hello. So you all gave us great advice about taco. Um, <laughs> After we talked to our friends, those of you who catch the live probably heard some of this, but after we talked to our friends, Nathan was under the understanding that Taco was ready to breed. Uh, turns out he's not. He's actually not going to be ready to breed uh, for probably about six more weeks, so that answers a lot of questions that we had. I'm not sure uh, how the miscommunication happened, but at the end of the day, at least we know we don't have a bad buck. We just have a buck that's not mature. So Nathan um, has been breeding the other ladies to the tan male. He really deserves a name. I mean, we, I'm like, we have got to name him. Um, so that's kind of where we are with that. Just giving Taco some time to finish developing. We have moved Taco to one of the ground pens. That's something a lot of you guys said was that 
if they're right next to the female, uh, they don't get near as excited to breed because they are just used to having them there. They smell them, which makes sense. So we decided we would just go ahead and move him and graze him on the grass just while he is finishing maturing. Um, and then we'll probably just move him in uh, whenever we get ready to breed him. But it was really good to just kind of like know where we stand on that because before Nathan and I were like, we are just so bad at this. Like what is going on? And so knowing that, oh well, really wasn't us, kind of made us feel a little better. All right, the rabbits are fed and watered and hayed. And now I'm moving out to the garden. So I'm just harvesting a cabbage. My plan is just to have some sauteed cabbage for lunch, but then for dinner, uh, Nathan will be back home and I'm going to make cabbage steaks. Um, so you just, let me put my knife down. You just make these thick cuts in your cabbage and you just like sear them and fry, or I'm not gonna fry them, but you just like sear them in your cast iron skillet. And I'm gonna make that be the base. And then I am going to bake some salmon and put on top of it. I'm also going to mash up some rutabagas like a potato. Uh, so it's just gonna be a really good farm fresh dinner. I think he's really gonna enjoy it whenever he comes home too. Uh, I did get asked a lot of questions what I was doing with all the broccoli that I harvested from the last video. And all Nathan and I did was blanch it in hot water soak it in cold water and then we ended up just freezing it uh, when we buy broccoli from the store we buy it fresh a lot but we also buy like frozen broccoli or frozen cauliflower so really that's the best way to put up broccoli like i couldn't eat all of that broccoli fresh it stays good about six months in the freezer like that and we eat broccoli like several times a week um, then my family's coming to town for Christmas, so we'll probably give them some. Uh, but overall, that's just what we're doing with it. It's what I have found was the best way. We tried to vacuum seal it, and there was just too much moisture that the bags wouldn't seal. So we just put them in like freezer gallon baggies, and they actually worked really well. There's another thing a lot of you guys pointed out to me. Oh, you left all the leaves to your broccoli. Um, I did, we will eat those. So these are actually like really good, just sauteed. Now some of them, the plastic uh, covering, we've just been having crazy wind, so they've come off of them. Um, but yeah, these actually taste really good. They're pretty tender. Um, I would say they're kind of comparable to a collard. So as you can see, I've cut the heads of the broccoli off, but I've still left the plant intact. And as we just need fresh greens, um, my cut and come again lettuce got totally toasted by the frost, but a lot of these are still fine. And that's just what we're using for like our lettuce leaves and sautés and stuff. I still have more broccoli to harvest. Uh, we'll probably just harvest this and eat it fresh. Um, there's still, I haven't done any uh, in this row, so hopefully that could be on the list this week to get done. So I ended up harvesting my first rutabaga last week. Um, my plan was just to saute it, and I ended up just like tasting it raw, like cutting it up and tasting it raw, and I loved it. Uh, Nathan and I, it was so mild, even kind of had like a sweet uh, aftertaste. Nathan and I loved it. So we ended up just eating the entire one raw, but like I said, the ones I'm doing here, it's gonna be for dinner. Um, there's some decent sized ones. I really want the golden ones. I think those are the ones I'm gonna try to grow next year. That's a good, they're really pretty too. Um, we've just been feeding the tops to the chickens and the rabbits. But I think a few of these, and I haven't had these covered up or anything, and the frost hasn't really touched them, which is really, really nice. Uh, even the tops, you know, they that's a great thing about root vegetables is they can store in the ground even with the frost, and they're totally covered because the main part of the plant grows down uh, into the soil, and it kind of just becomes this nice little insulated root cellar for it. However, the tops of all of these... I mean, it got down to like 23 last night and the tops just don't take a beating like some of the other greens and brassicas that I have in the garden. Uh, so that's actually really, really nice too. This one's smaller, but it's still gonna be fine for what I'm trying to cook up for dinner. 
One thing I have learned with the rutabaga, I planted them according to the seed packet uh, because I've never grown rutabaga before. I thought they were gonna get much bigger. Um, this one right here, the last one that I harvested was probably a bit bigger, but this is pretty typical size for them. So I definitely think I could have packed more in there together, utilized the space that I had a lot better, grown a lot more rutabagas than what I did. But it is just one of those things I've never grown before. I was just doing according to the seed packet. So I will tell you, there is some liberty with that. You could probably plant them 10 to 12 inches apart. I think I did like 18 inches on those and it definitely wasn't necessary. All right, I made it back inside, trying to cool off a bit. Getting these prepared for dinner. I have a blessing way tonight for a dear friend uh, so I'm trying to get all this ready that way whenever I come back home I can just start cooking it uh, y'all would be really proud of me I think I have been doing most of the cooking and I've really been enjoying it it also I think has been really rejuvenating for Nathan to just get that break and not have to worry about dinner uh, so for me it was kind of a win-win he's so encouraging so anytime I make something, he's like, babe, like you did so good. So it's just really been encouraging me to like keep trying new foods and to keep cooking. Um, so, you know, he's been gone hunting all weekend, probably has had like deer camp food. And I really just wanted to make him a good meal whenever he got home. Uh, so I'm hoping to have all this prepared whenever I get back from my blessing way. Uh, just cook everything up and let him have a good meal. Also, for those of you watching this thinking, what in the world is a blessing way? I say that pretty uh, nonchalantly because it's really common to me. I have a lot of friends who have done blessing ways, but I, anytime I mention it, someone's like, oh, what? Uh, so a blessing way I had with June and it was just such a precious time. It's kind of like a baby shower, except you don't bring any gifts. Um, typically you'll bring some sort of like a bead or jewel that you will end up all putting on a necklace that represents a part of birth to you. Um, and you all just kind of sit around in a circle, you write affirmations for the mom. That way she can hang up while she's in a labor. You all present this bead that you end up putting on a necklace saying, you know, what birth means to you. And it's really just an opportunity to rally around the mother and encourage her that the human body and what a woman is capable of is magnificent and you just unify with her um, support her and encourage her before she gets ready to have birth and it is really so special way more special than any gift I've ever received just having my dearest friends rally around me and support me it was so amazing and everyone gets sent home with these candles um, and there's one person that notifies everyone. So for me, it was my doula. I notified the women that were at my blessing way when I went into labor. And so they all lit the candle and the candle remained lit until I had Ivy. And it was just a way of like a sisterhood saying, hey, we're unified with you. We're supporting you while you're in labor, even though we're not there. And it was just really, really sweet. So anytime I hear of someone else doing a blessing way, I'm like, I want in on that because it was just such a special moment. Uh, so that's kind of what I've been uh, uh, it's, it's why I was doing farm chores dressed like this today. So I do want to take you guys out to the greenhouse because there is something that I want to talk to you all about. So you guys were so sweet to me, encouraging me, telling me how beautiful uh, this space is that I have. And I really did appreciate that. You guys lifted up my spirits and you guys reminded me of the possibility that's out here. And for that, I am really, really grateful. Um, something you guys don't know about this greenhouse is yes it is hodgepodge and that's totally fine i love creativity and i love you know using the resources you have on hand so that really is not my issue with the greenhouse it is in part of our property that does not get a lot of sun uh, we get sun from this one side right here and it's for a very short period of the day. Um, there are obviously no windows on the back side. This side over here is just woods, so it gets no sun either. So the problem I have is the greenhouse doesn't get a lot of natural sun. It stays shaded, and the only part that does get sun is the front part. Uh, so with that, all of my plants grow up because they're growing towards the artificial light. Um, and
And when I was talking through with my friend Sean, who does those hoop houses, uh, he was like, I'm just surprised that you have cranked out as many plants as you have in such a small space and with really bad lighting. Uh, but the problem is I don't grow starts. We have a joke about this. I grow trees. So my tomato plants at the plant sale are huge um, because they're all tall and although the stem is stocky and strong they're tall because they keep growing up instead of putting that energy into just like ideally in a plant start you want like short and stocky with really mature leaves uh, you don't really want something tall the issue i have with that is in transporting uh, a lot of mine break and a lot of people don't want to buy tall tomato plants now i do sell them uh but it just has not been ideal but i had got my mind right i had told you guys y'all all encouraged me that this greenhouse has so much potential and i was like all right yes like i am just gonna push forward and we will make this work for another season. Uh, then I get a phone call from my friend Sean and he's like, hey, I wanna talk about this greenhouse. And I was like, yeah, you know, like Nathan and I decided not to do it. Uh, we just really didn't wanna spend those extra funds right now because with the hoop house, uh, right now Nathan has built me all the shelves that's in here. So you'd have to have tables that you built to be able to put all your flats on. You'd have to have vents, um, you know, things like that that I don't have to think about now with this greenhouse. I just have to tell you guys, I am so thankful for the friends that God has placed in our life. And when Nathan and I were talking with, you know, through that with him, like, hey, not right now, probably next season, he was like, oh, well, I was expecting Nathan to help me, you know, and I was going to do the tables for free. The event was going to be for free. He was like, literally, you're just like paying for material. Um, and he was like, and that would get it to this price. And that price was totally okay with Nathan and I, like, so yeah this is fine i we didn't realize that he was just going to be teaching nathan and wanting nathan to help him in that and it was just one of those like god you are so good because i was kind of stressing out about this because i just knew that I was wanting to double the plants that I normally grow. And I knew that wasn't possible in here. Although it does look great, I know that it is shaded and I have a really hard time with the artificial lighting uh, and the grow lights. And there was just a lot of different elements that you guys on this side of the screen uh, really didn't know about, you know? And so I was just like, okay, you're right. Like I can power through this, it'll be fine. This is a great greenhouse. You guys are totally right. And I have great dreams for this greenhouse. I want this to be a house, a house plant propagation greenhouse. Uh, house plants like shade they do not like good sun so i will be utilizing this greenhouse i am in the market of trying to find house plant plugs which actually proved to be really difficult um that is something that i would like to offer at the plant sale I also have a local business that would buy those from me year round so that is something that i'm trying to do so all the work that we put into the greenhouse is not for nothing uh, there's great possibility that could happen here and i could just grow something that would thrive in the environment of being shaded instead of things like tomatoes and peppers that really need that sun that it's just not having now the wonderful thing about sean's uh, hoop house is that it's movable so we can move it to another piece of the property and plant in the ground in it and it can be multi-use so when you think about spending a, a bottom dollar on you know if i had originally went with the wood greenhouse in the in the garden it would have only served one purpose and it would have been a seed starting greenhouse and that's it uh, with doing this with sean I literally can use this for whatever. Let's say two years from now, I'm not in a place where I need a seed starting greenhouse. Um, maybe we have a different greenhouse. Maybe I'm not doing a plant sale anymore. We can literally use it as like a chicken schooner and we could have meat chickens and graze them and move them in that just kind of like a chicken tractor. It's so versatile. It was literally such an answer to prayers that I was just like, God, you are so good. You care about the desires of my heart. I was just like such a moment of thankfulness and I am so thankful for Sean um, and him being willing to teach Nathan. Uh, we are going to go through that whole process because I know a lot of you guys had said to, well, the greenhouse you have now is actually better than one of those. Um, hoop houses for what I'm wanting to do I don't believe that to be the case uh, what you can put out in those hoop houses and just how versatile they are is a lot um, and so Sean is going to be doing a video with me on just the installation of it and then he's also going to kind of give you guys some of those facts about why we recommend something like that versus this depending on what you're wanting we are really wanting to turn our farm into like market gardens and things like that and so it just kind of makes sense for us um, but it was something I was so excited about I couldn't wait to tell you guys also just thank y'all for rallying behind me those of you who've been praying and believing that God would fulfill that dream for me and make that happen 
happen, it, it's just really, really rewarding. Um, and it just really allows me to stay in a place of thankfulness and gratitude. Uh, so I will probably be spending a lot of time out here still. I'm really envisioning this greenhouse being a place that I come to and I create. Um, I love this space. I really do. I love spending my nights out here in seed starting season, um, just listening to music, you know, praying and just staying in tune with everything. And I feel like this greenhouse is kind of like that house of refuge for me. It's a place that I can go to and kind of escape from everything else and just turn on my thinking cap, you know, pour out my dreams and ideas and just generate creativity and I think this space is going to be great for that and that is kind of what I'm going to try and turn it into. I'll probably have one section that is used for storage. Obviously if I can find house plant plugs we'll use a good portion of it for that. Um, but there's a little desk over there hidden behind all the madness and I am really just going to use this space to be intentional. Um, and I just appreciate you guys rallying behind me, supporting my dream, supporting our channel and our family. You guys mean a lot to us. And the fact that I get the privilege of sharing our lives with you guys, the good, the bad, the ugly, it really does mean a lot. You guys teach us a lot. Your comments and advice, truly it means a lot. Nathan and I read every single comment you guys put on our videos. Um, and we appreciate y'all so much. But I've got to go change shoes, go collect the eggs and make me some lunch. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.